John, don't make me do it. No, no! Hey there, guys, how are you? So I saw Venom The Last Dance a few days ago, and the title doesn't lie, Venom does in fact dance in this film. I know that's what everyone was clamoring to see. So now let's talk about the movie. Jesus Christ! If you eat popcorn out of my head, do I get to eat it out of yours? Maybe later, but with all that said, check out my Venom popcorn bucket. I would probably say this is the best thing about Venom 3. Whenever you want popcorn, you just fist Venom's mouth. So what is this movie about? Eddie and Venom are on the run and face pursuit from both worlds. As circumstances tighten, they're compelled to make a heart-wrenching choice that can mark the end of their symbiotic partnership. When it comes to the previous two installments of Venom films in this franchise, I wanted to love them and I almost thought I would going into them because I'm a huge fan of Tom Hardy and we'll talk about that in just one second. But after that 2018 attempt at a Venom film, I just knew that the scripts for these films weren't going to live up to the hype or the anticipation that I had. And in all fairness, if you like these Venom films, I kind of understand it because I know people who love this franchise, and the best explanation that they gave me for this is, they like hokey, corny shit. And I get that, because on occasion, I like watching movies like Van Helsing on a cold, rainy night. But the difference here is, that movie came out in 2005. And that's where the Venom franchise feels like it belongs, in the early 2000s. But then again, so does every other modern day Sony Marvel movie. They all feel like they belong in the early 2000s. I'm talking to you, Morbius. I'm talking to you, Madam Web. And I'll probably be talking to you, Craven the Hunter. Now let's talk about Eddie Brock, played by Tom Hardy. And I love me some Tom Hardy. He was one of the motivating factors that ever made me hit the gym. Just look at those traps. Don't you want to take a bite out of them? Hey, Mrs. Chan, what is this, a virus or something? Now, the one thing that always drove me crazy about Tom Hardy's performance as Eddie Brock in these films, he's from San Francisco. He lives in San Francisco, but he has an East Coast accent. I just feel like that's Tom Hardy's American accent and he never changes it. And I'm okay with that. I'm just pointing it out. And once again, I love me some Tom Hardy, but I never bought into the fact that his character is supposed to be an investigative journalist throughout these films. He just comes across like some dude who would be a bartender and all the common sense and all of the investigative skill sets are actually done by Venom. It feels like he's the only character who applies logic to certain situations to get from point A to point B throughout these films. Now this is just a theory, but I can't help but think Tom Hardy signed on to the three picture deal of the Venom films simply for a payday. Because throughout Venom 3 The Last Dance, I could just feel the contractual obligation pouring through Tom Hardy's performance throughout this film. It just looked like he didn't want to be there and he couldn't wait to wrap up filming and have them say cut and then he's done with the franchise and he can move on. That's just my theory, that's just my observation, but I just don't really feel like he cared about these movies. He was there for a payday, and that's okay. Once again, get your money and run with it, Tom Hardy. Oh, I would love to, I would love to cross paths with Spider-Man, but we, we, you know, we, we set out to do a trilogy. This is the trilogy, and, yeah. and, and that's where we're at now, so we shall see how it performs and what other people want to do, but... Well, the fans. But in all fairness to Tom Hardy, I don't want to blame his performance too much in this film because maybe it's the fault of the writing and the directing of the film. But also, did I mention that Tom Hardy has a writing credit on this film? This movie is directed by first-time director Kelly Marshall. And she also wrote the first two Venom films along with directing this newest installment. And she wrote one of the Fifty Shades of Grey movies, I don't know. But I don't want to put too much blame on the director of this film because it feels like no matter what, when it comes to the Sony-verse of comic book movies, they're all going to share that same tone and look no matter who the director is. And I think that's one of the biggest detriments to the Sony-verse of comic book movies currently. But with all that said, I quite enjoyed the scene where you get a Venom horse. I liked that. I quite enjoyed that a lot. It sort of reminded me of Ghost Rider. This scene right here. But the biggest positive I can give Venom The Last Dance is I quite enjoyed the bromance between Eddie and Venom. And this time around, Venom has learned what humanity is. He's almost plight and nice to children. It's kind of weird, but I kind of liked it at times. And in this story, Venom's only dream is to go to New York City and see the Statue of Liberty. But at one point in this film, because keep in mind, it is sort of like a road trip movie, they do stop off in Vegas and no spoilers, but there is a replica of the Statue of Liberty on the Vegas Strip. 
So maybe if they just drove past it and looked up, he would have seen the Statue of Liberty. I know, maybe I'm, I'm thinking too much into it. Now let's talk about subplots and other characters throughout Venom 3, The Last Dance. And the best way I can describe all of that is, it just feels like a big mess that falls flat. You don't really care about any of the characters. You don't really care about any of the subplots and they're almost boring to watch. <laughs> For example, actress Juno Temple plays this annoying character named Dr. Payne. And other than the last five minutes of this film, I'm not quite sure what her character's purpose was. And speaking of random characters and subplots, there's a 45 minute sequence in this film dedicated to a hippie family that pick up Eddie and Venom as they're hitchhiking. And it almost feels like it could have turned into a Scooby-Doo type adventure, which I think maybe that would have been better. But yeah, it was just so bizarre. And I, I didn't hate the hippie family. I thought they added some humanity to the story. And I think that was the purpose of putting them in this film. But just bizarre. <laughs> yeah, these movies just feel like complete randomness at times. And none of the randomness ever pays off. But I'll tell you one thing that definitely didn't pay off. And keep in mind, no spoilers. Because if you saw the trailer, you already know what I'm talking about. It was the character Noel, the big baddie antagonist that people were hoping would show up in this film or maybe in a later installment to have a showdown with Venom and maybe multiple other comic book characters from the Spider-Verse of things. But what you saw in the trailer is basically what you get in the movie. And this is just speculation of my theory for my stupid head to you, but I think showing Noel in the trailer was a last ditch effort attempt to market this film and try to make it look bigger and better than it was. But, I think they blatantly lied to all of us. I honestly feel like they slapped people in the face and said, yeah, we don't care. We got your money. You're disappointed. Go home and cry. And that's what I did. But then again, who cares? Because keep in mind, this is made and produced by Sony. When have they ever stuck to their guns and formulated an idea in the comic verse of things to grow and evolve into something else? So you'll probably never see Noel again. Or maybe you'll have some cameo in another... Craven the Hunter movie or something for two seconds, but they won't actually do anything with the character to have a payoff down the road. So, who cares? Now, here are my final flicking thoughts on Venom The Last Dance. If you like the first two installments of this franchise, you'll probably like the third one, maybe less or more. For me, I think I like this more than Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. Just because I enjoyed the road trip aspect of it, and I liked the buddy romance vibe between Eddie and Venom. I think that was by far the best thing of this film. But outside of that, I think the movie was just sort of boring and messy and just I felt nothing along the way. And I hated all the secondary characters. I thought they were generic and bland. The antagonists of the film just sort of felt like they were there. And then you had the big baddie that was teased with Noel which I just knew would never pay off and amount to anything. And of course, I was unfortunately proven right by watching this film. So uh, I guess I'm just happy that maybe, just maybe, one day down the road, they can possibly reboot this franchise or do something different with it. But then again, keep in mind, this is from the same studio that put out movies like this and movies like this. So my expectations for future comic book films in this universe, I don't really have any other expectations other than I'll probably be disappointed unless things drastically change. I'm going to give Venom the last dance, ah, uh, this right here, because I don't feel like I would ever go back and rewatch this movie ever again. And that's exactly how I feel about Venom 1 and 2. I've never had the urge to revisit those films. But when it comes to early 2000s comic book movies, even bad early 2000s comic book movies, they have a certain rewatchability and a fun factor to them. Now here's my question for you and let me know down below, what did you think about Venom 3 The Last Dance? Or if you could reboot the Venom franchise, who would you have play Eddie Brock? Let me know that down below as well. As always, make sure you subscribe, that way I can see you next time. I'm gonna go play with my Venom popcorn bucket.